John Maxwell famously said that everything rises and falls on leadership. And while that may or may not be true, one thing is for certain. Everything can fall when leaders fail. Hey Leader, David Burke is here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And you know, today we're gonna talk about something that nobody really wants to discuss too often. We're gonna talk about failure. We're gonna talk specifically about why leaders fail, why they fail their teams, why their teams fail when being led by them, how they cause strife and division, how miscommunications can happen, and the ways in which leaders can be headed for a crash. Now, why are we gonna talk about this? Well, I deeply believe that that failure is feedback. And so if you understand these failures ahead of time, you can benefit from the feedback of other people's failures. Experience is the best teacher, right? But it comes at a discount when it's someone else's experience. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about five ways leaders fail and what you can do to keep that from happening. So the first common failure among leaders is that they stop learning. Leaders just get to a certain position and stop learning. You know, it's, it's shocking when you look at the statistics about how few Americans or people in the West in general read a book in any given year. It's like one, one nonfiction book a year. So if you're reading two, by the way, that means you're an above average learning curve. And the weird thing about this is that so many leaders had to commit to a robust learning process in order to get into a leadership role. You know, whether the organization had a formal leadership development process or whether they had to make their own, craft their own through reading and taking courses and, and deconstructing failures that they had in a prior role and extracting lessons from that. And then often leaders get into the role they were looking for. And even if it's only temporary, they stop learning. But the thing about learning is that it's a powerful habit, but it's one that's really easy to fall behind in when you don't keep up with the habit of learning. Once you stop reading on a regular basis, once you stop taking a beginner's mindset, once you stop doing after action reviews after failures, it becomes really hard to pick that back up again. And that's why it's not leaders fail because they don't learn, it's because they stop learning. When they've stopped learning, they stop the habit and it becomes really hard to start it back up again. How do you avoid this? Be ahead of that curve. It only takes two books a year. Be ahead of that curve in what you're learning. Be consuming information that will help you grow as a leader and as a person. Not only information about the technical skills, the knowledge skills and abilities you need, the business, the industry that you're in, but the people skills, the empathetic skills. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And the other skills you need. Be learning, keep that habit of learning going, even if it's just a little bit, because keeping the habit going matters more for your long-term learning than does a binge and purge cycle of learning. Don't stop learning. The second common way leaders fail is they lack empathy. See, I told you we we're gonna talk about that. What I mean here is that a lot of leaders get promoted into their first leadership role because they are great individual contributors, they're technicians, they have a set of technical skills or productive skills, or so often we see it in sales where they have a great set of sales skills, and so we reward them by giving them a leadership role. The problem is that when they're then leading the team, they often focus on trying to take the team to the same level of proficiency in those technical or productive skills that they had. And that's fine by itself. That's actually great. Like we want to have our best people teach the rest of our people. We want that. The problem is that people are different. The way you execute on a task is not the way other people on your team are going to want to execute on a task. The way you sold is not the way other people need to sell necessarily. And when leaders lack empathy, they don't change around their expectations and their training to adjust to the different personalities and backgrounds and preferences of their different people. That not only becomes a recipe for failure in teaching the training, it becomes a recipe for failure in trying to do performance enhancement, performance improvement, coaching, etc. Because when you don't understand the full person, you don't understand how to give them the best feedback that they need either. So we're not talking about empathy here as a purely emotional thing. We're talking about empathy, like true understanding about that other person, their unique abilities, their unique perspective, and how you can adapt your message and what you want to get across and what you want to train people on through that. You can only do that if you have that empathy. So start to grow in that empathy. Ask people questions to the level they're willing to self-disclose about other things than just their non-work life. Get to know their 
background, their hobbies, get to know their family, get to know their experiences that they're proud of, get to know their personality. And as you do, you'll learn a whole lot more about that person than just their job function and the skills they may or may not have. And I know it may sound weird, but in learning about that whole person, you'll also learn how to help them level up those same skills you've been hired, you've been tapped as a leader with helping them grow. The third most common way that leaders fail is they lack integrity. I mean, this one's kind of obvious, right? I mean, we know, you know, the massive examples of Theranos, right? Elizabeth Holmes and, and WeWork and Adam Newman. We, okay, we've seen massive integrity lacking failures, but let's be honest, leaders fail in small ways with little integrity lacks too. Right? When leaders enforce a different set of standards for one group of people and others, or enforce a set of standards with their team that they themselves are not accountable to, that is a lack of integrity. That is not applying a, a uniform standard. When leaders are willing to make exceptions to certain rules that really as an organization we can't make exceptions to, that does not, it, it may seem in the moment like you're helping your team by bending the rules, but that does not strengthen your leadership. In fact, it diminishes it. It starts to remove some of your leadership credibility because if you're seen as being able to bend in some areas, other people who lack integrity more are gonna try and get you to bend in further areas and pretty soon you're headed for total leadership failure. How do you avoid this? Well, you hold the line. Understand what the standards are. Understand what the organization and what senior leaders' preferences are, if any, on bending the rules and commit to only doing it in those areas. Even better, don't bend them. Make sure that you're enforcing standards equally. While you're adapting the message you use to enforce those standards based on empathy, you're still holding the same standards themselves and you're holding yourself to that standard as well. But one of the weird advantages is we know that those leaders can have higher expectations of their team because they themselves have met those expectations. But don't stop just because you're in a leadership role. Keep holding yourself to the same standard as your team and you'll keep your team from failing. The fourth common way that leaders fail, and this sort of goes along with the last one, is that they play favorites. Okay, and let's just stop here for a second because every leader is gonna have an in-group and an out-group. We know this from decades of psychological research, leader member exchange theory, for example. Every leader is going to have certain people that they have a more trusted and tested relationship with than others. That's not what we're talking about here, right? You are going to click with certain people more than others. What we mean when we say play favorites is giving favorable tasks, giving favorable resources, giving favorable um, flexibility in schedules or bending of the rules to certain people because they're the people that you click with. Great leaders don't play favorites. They do know how to adjust how they enforce standards to uh, the different things they've learned about different people, but they don't play favorites. That's a recipe for failure. Why? Because as soon as people begin to feel dissatisfied, as soon as people feel that I put in this much effort and I'm only getting this result, and this person puts in less effort and is getting the same result, or puts in a same amount of effort and gets a better result from their leader, as soon as they feel that, they begin to get dissatisfied. And when they begin to get dissatisfied, they start looking outside of the team for new teams they can join, new ways they can feel fulfilled, they're less committed to the team. And that's not because of the person who got that favorable treatment. It's because of the leader that was willing to play favorites. So make sure your team knows what they can ask from you and what they can't ask from you. And those people that are in your in-group, let's be honest about what you would really ask of them. What you would really ask of them is to hold them to maybe an even higher standard than the people you haven't earned the trust of yet. Just because you've earned the trust doesn't mean they have it easy. In fact, it probably means the opposite. It means you're going to ask more of them as we bring up the others as well. So you might play a little bit of favorites in who you favor to take on a burden, but don't play favorites in who you favor to take that burden off of or lavish praise or rewards upon. Make sure you're playing that one quite equally so that your team stays committed to each other and not committed to just currying favor with you. And the last common leadership failure is that they don't prioritize. This one happens often in really successful teams. Here's what I mean by that, right? A lot of organizations say they have priorities, but let's be honest, if you have more than one, maybe three at the most, priority used to only be a singular word and then we pluraled it. Not too long ago, we made it plural priorities. The brain, the team's brain can only really handle maybe one to three priorities, critical tasks, projects to keep focused on. The problem is that as you're successful, as you're moving the needle on that, as you're making progress on that, as you're completing projects under budget, then early, as you're making more and more clients satisfied, as you're winning, people start to look to you to do more. 
They put more on your plate. They start to ask more of you. They start to ask more of the team. And what can happen? Well, very quickly, the tyranny of the urgent and the tyranny of the new can distract from those priorities. Don't be that way. Great leaders focus in and make sure the team focuses in on what those priorities are. And when new tasks and new demands come in, one of the first things they ask themselves is, where does this fit in the ranking? Just because it's new doesn't mean it goes to the top or even the top three. We need to make sure we know where it fits and what, if it comes to this, we need to give up lower down on that list, that ranking of priorities, what we need to give up in order to make room for this new thing, or even if it's worth giving it up. You may find yourself in a position where you have to say no to new tasks or new projects people are asking of you and your team in order to keep your team focused on the stuff you know is actually driving value for them and for the organization. Leaders fail when they don't prioritize, but great leaders and great teams are clear on what's a priority and are willing to say no to just about everything else. So if leaders fail because of all of these, then great leaders never stop learning. They have empathy, they don't lack integrity, they don't play favorites, and they're clear on what their priorities are. And that's good news. That's good news for just about every leader who wants to succeed because let's be honest, these are actually simple. They're not easy, but they're simple things to remember. They're difficult to keep enforcing. It's hard to continue to learn. It's hard to avoid the human tendency to want to play favorites. But because they're simple, they are easier to keep top of mind for you as a leader and keep top of mind across your team. And if you do so, you're going to find your team shifting into one that's more and more successful. Yeah, people are going to want to add more to your plate when you do that, but you're going to prioritize. And as you do that, you'll shift your team to one with a greater culture. And as you do all of that, you'll become a better leader yourself and your team will be able to do their best work ever. Oh, and one more thing. This list of mistakes is common among all leaders, but if you're a new leader, there's a few more things you're going to want to look out for to make sure that you and your team are successful. So you're going to check out this video here on common mistakes new leaders make. That one. You might want to prioritize watching it.